Thank you, Samir. Uh, welcome to uh, welcome everyone. Uh, we have an amazing session on life science and healthcare with any eminent leaders across life science and healthcare industry. Uh, uh, so let me start with Dr. Anjali. Uh, Dr. Anjali, how do you see that industry is changing uh, with the new capabilities uh, with the help of Gen AI? Uh, and what are the new frontiers are getting open? Uh, thanks, Bhavin. Uh, healthcare, as we know, uh, is undergoing a tremendous revolution. And being a practitioner today, I will talk more about a clinical care or a patient care. So uh, healthcare has uh, started adopting AI as never before. This is because uh, they want to augment the physical ecosystem uh, with the digital ecosystem. So there, there are a lot of teleconsultation and other things we are seeing are becoming popular and becoming a mainstream in healthcare. So AI is getting adopted across and same time, I think uh, Gen AI is boosting a further efficiency into a system. So there are many use cases in the healthcare or a clinical ecosystem. It might be starting with increasing operational efficiency, not only for an administrator, but for a clinician and other staff over uh, to a rapid diagnostics. And then it might be a getting more personalized treatment recommendation using AI and might be in particular Gen AI. So today I will quickly talk about one of the use cases, especially into uh, you know a chronic disease care, which is uh, one of the largest uh, disease burden over our uh, population across the globe. So can it can be a cancer care, it can be a neurology related care, or it can be a say a kidney health or a, a you know nephrology care. The data of a particular patient lies across system. There is a huge amount of data. Uh, which comes from a multiple sources and multiple stakeholders. And uh, for a given physician to access all this data in a very, very crisp manner and a quick manner was a great challenge till today. So especially Gen AI enabled solution can pull out data from a different sources. They can you know, make it a meaningful uh, you know, summary of that data, which can be quickly presented to a patient. Uh, which can be quickly presented to a clinician for a, a patient care decision. And especially true when the data lies over a period of time. So when the uh, patient related data lies over three year, five year of the time frame, I think Gen AI able solutions uh, do a fantastic job of uh, you know creating a very, very uh, precise summary. And then this summary actually can be presented as a prompt uh, again for a Gen AI and then they look into the all corpus of uh, clinical pathways, the treatment recommendations uh, and all the you know medical literature there and provides a personal uh, you know treatment recommendation for a clinician. And we have seen it, we developed a kind of POC and it I, I think it really blown away the clinician because the way uh, the time was uh, you know uh, so quick and there were very very relevant information which came in a fraction of a second. So in that case, I think clinical summary creation uh, might be one of the best uh, use cases to start with. And uh, it is also paving a way for a personalized care in the medicine. Thank you, Dr. Anjali. Ricky, uh, you work across the globe. How do you see this thing spanning across the countries and across the geography? Thank you, Bhavin. So since antiquity the mission of every healthcare physician has been to heal their patients i should know both my parents are doctors i have grown up listening to them talking medicine is a noble profession for pharma and life sciences as well it has always been about developing medicines that improve patients health better patients outcome are always been the ultimate measure of success more than a line somewhere in an accounting sheet but as time has progressed the patients has slipped into the background with physicians treating symptoms and pharma has been developing bulk medication. Now with Gen AI, we have a chance to bring the patient back to the forefront. The promise of Gen AI lies in enhancing the productivity of the people, enabling us to analyze vast amount of data and minimizing the errors and minimizing the timelines. AI can handle repetitive tasks it can handle the deep dive research and analysis, and it can handle the time sink tasks that you know takes us away, the focus away from the patients. 
So one practical example uh, has been that the Gen AI can be used as a patient care companion. Just imagine a solution that would analyze patients' unique medical history, their current symptoms, their test results, and even what they like or dislike about their treatment. Like for example, I do not like paracetamol or dolo that much. I would prefer a meftal, for example, just giving you an example from a painkiller perspective. That also is very important because when we go to a doctor and we meet a doctor for the first time, they generally prefer to give their generic solutions and patient may or may not feel comfortable with it. So with Gen AI solution, it considers all this information and generates customized outreach to the patients with the goal of greater empathetic advice. Reminders and patient specific insights can also improve treatment adherence with messages and interventions that relate directly to the patients. A comprehensive patient analytics platform like this can provide valuable insights and visualizations to the doctor, giving them timely and accurate disease information. It will also maybe extremely integrate with pharmaceutical companies that are working on those uh, medications, informing them what is working, what is not working. It is so important for pharma companies to know what are the adverse effects happening with their medicine. No pharma company wants to sell medicine which is having an adverse uh, effect. So they can take steps to address those uh, effects from the treatments to the larger population. Gone will be the days that one size fits all. The future, I think, with Gen AI that is going to come is going to be personal precision medicine. And that future is coming up very fast. So Gen AI, I think, will be a game changer. It will also fast track clinical trials, as Dr. Anjali was mentioning. I was just thinking, like, how Gen AI, and I don't know if you've seen the demo 4.0 yesterday. Like, if you have that kind of a device recording your clinical trials, real world trials, just imagine a traditional AI system is already robust in its ability to manage numerous records. That kind of a solution will just avoid all the errors that can happen when the clinical information is accidentally duplicated in a patient's file. AI has proven itself time and again that it can help physicians with efficiencies like this. It will help avoid burnout. Like why physicians work 12 hours a day, I don't know. But like if you have a Gen AI solution that can support the doctors, that will definitely, you know, change the way patients are treated. So I believe Gen AI, with its ability to reason, with its ability to parsing a mountain of data, it will make connections that a human will take far longer to uncover and it will change all our lives for the better. Thanks, Ricky. Uh, from this high level picture, when we go a little bit more into the depth, uh, Ashutosh, can you please share what are the capabilities in the life science and healthcare area are being built and evaluated. Yeah, thanks. Uh, uh, so uh, there are numerous uh, use cases in healthcare industry which are under evaluation by different companies. Uh, let me focus on the health insurance side for now. So uh, one of the major use cases which, which we are seeing, you know, uh, which is tried by almost all the companies is the customer service chatbots. So Gen AI can be utilized to create advanced chatbots capable of undertaking natural language and uh, providing personalization to the customers, uh, which can be used like uh, for uh, handling frequent asked questions about insurance plans, coverage options, premium deductibles, and claim procedures. This saves time for both customer and agent by providing instant response to common inquiry. The other is like assist with the plan selection for customers through the process of selecting the right insurance plan based on their needs, preference, and budget. Chatbot can also help in uh, providing uh, policy information, uh, can assist with claim submission, they can assist with provider searches uh, by uh, finding provider within their insurance network based on location, specialty, availability, and patient reviews. So chatbot is, is, is an uh, area where a lot of companies are trying to come up uh, you know, trying their uh, luck. The other area which I see uh, is, uh, you know, taking space is uh, claim processing automation. So a lot of Gen AI stuff can be done on it. So Gen AI can 
streamline the claims processing workflow by automating routine tasks such as data entry, document processing, claim validations. This reduces the uh, processing claim, improve accuracy, and then has overall efficiency in the claim uh, management. Uh, the other area is uh, provider network optimization, so by analyzing healthcare provider data uh, and patient preferences, then I can optimize provider networks to you know uh, ensure adequate coverage, minimize costs, improve access to the quality care for insured members. Uh, one more area which I see, uh, a part of companies, uh, you know, uh, investing on the Gen AI side is the regulatory compliance and risk management. So Gen AI can assist in monitoring the regulatory changes, uh, assessing the compliance risk, and implementing necessary controls to ensure adherence to the healthcare regulation is standard. So these are the few cases which I see uh, next couple of months. Uh, a lot of companies are working on. Definitely, the list is this big. Yeah. Thanks, Ashutosh. Dr. Santosh, uh, part of AstraZeneca, you are leading the global team. So, how do you see the new capabilities are being built for uh, pharma giants like AstraZeneca or any other companies at the world? What are your views on uh, Gen AI's impact and product development as well as evaluating new capabilities development within the organization or as a product? All right. Uh, nice insights from Ashutosh. Uh, thanks, Bhavin. So my uh, view is uh, personal and uh, what I have been uh, observing as an industry practice, right, in terms of uh, all the patient-centric organizations which we talk about. Um, I was quite surprised with the intensity of potential use cases coming across the industry. Uh, I, I know Ash Ashutosh touched upon health, uh, health, healthcare insurance. Let me talk about what is happening around research and development, uh, where I sit and uh, my observations from the industry. Right. So, if you take the drug discovery process, there have been uh, many uh, use cases around how we can build novel uh, molecular structure. Uh, and I know Anjali is on the space into uh, protein uh, genomics and uh, protein mix and there is a lot of uh, potential use cases coming around right around that and uh, uh, the department i am into is global uh, clinical data management and uh, where uh, we start from the clinical trial the study setup till contact phase so there are uh, multiple opportunities where um, we are looking at uh, leveraging a chatbot solution right in terms of uh, let it be the protocol uh, uh, deviation documentation or having an ai assistant in terms of assisting uh, the clinical data managers right in terms of uh, the protocol deviation one example which i can think of and uh, there are uh, many other potential use cases right around uh, uh, synthetic data generation where uh, people are looking for uh, generating the data sets uh, which can help us in terms of accelerating the clinical trials uh, across the therapeutic areas and uh, there are uh, uh, industry level challenges around patient recruitment specific to uh, specific uh, sites and there are uh, uh, um, uh, ways of avenues where genia is helping in terms of uh, patient recruitment in terms of understanding the patient uh, population trends uh, analyzing it with the help of llm models um, and and helping us right in terms of uh, uh, going for a targeted population uh, which is supporting the, the different therapeutic areas as well so i think I think uh, the future is bright in terms of adopting to Gen AI uh, solution, and um, uh, I, I think uh, uh, it is touching upon the different uh, pharma value chain uh, uh, altogether. Okay. Thanks a lot. Thank uh, thanks a lot, Ashutosh and uh, Dr. Santosh. Really interesting to hear uh, so many use cases uh, from you. Uh, what we'll do is we'll move to uh, Dr. Karthik. And you know, a very interesting question, you know, while we've been talking about so many use cases, I think all of us also want to understand more on what various companies are actually looking to do, right? How are they assessing uh, adoption of uh, a new technology? How are they looking at ROI of this technology? And also, you know, uh, are there any trends that you see in org structure or data security, et cetera, right? So these are things that generally come up whenever there is a new technology that's sweeping the world. So I'd like to hear your views on you know many of these things. Am I audible? Yes. So, okay, so I've had an interesting journey which moved between IT technology and technology services right into banking where I had uh, Standard Chartered Bank's uh, innovation program globally. And the last six, seven years, I've moved completely into core healthcare. 
Uh, last one year, right now, I am actually in UAE. The reason I'm giving you this background, uh, the question you asked about assessment of frameworks and seeing how gen AI adoption implementation can be measured, what are the key success factors? Uh, for me, it has been quite a journey in this spectrum. The last one year has been interesting because also I was the CEO of the Indian Association of Cardiothoracic Surgeons. Right. So uh, imagine a technologist banker moving into the space of healthcare. Obviously, doctors in general don't like technology and they fear artificial intelligence. So the last one year, I have trained more than 10,000 cardiologists, cardiac surgeons. Uh, while not being a surgeon myself or an MBBS, but uh, being in the health tech healthcare space uh, for the last seven years, I got this unique opportunity to adopt Gen AI in life-threatening, life-saving situations. Right. So if I break it up into the spectrum of pre-operative surgery, operative surgery, and post-operative surgery, follow-ups, wellness, and the whole works in terms of how Gen AI can be used at various stages, right from disease prediction, disease prevention, uh, you know, alignment of surgical instruments, you know, for a physician, how he accesses all of this in the operating table when a life is at stake, right, is something which was eye-opening for myself. We also use Gen AI to create a very, very unique template for uh, you know, I heard uh, Dr. Anjali talk about uh, case-based training and uh, clinical care and all of that. We did a very similar thing. Uh, typically, a cardiac case runs into 27 pages average of documentation post-surgery, and doctors don't want to do this. So we leveraged conversational artificial intelligence. We used bots to kind of capture voice notes, translate that, transcribe that, feed it into Gen AI, and build certain predictor variables around what causes different kinds of cardiac situations. Um, so, you know, the last question for the day and, you know, after that, we'll try to wrap it up with, with a summary and uh, uh, try to close that. Uh, so probably this is for Dr. Karthik and Dr. Santosh, uh, right? So, uh, you know, what safeguards does this industry uh, needs to put in place? Yeah, thanks for pointing this question to me, Dhruv. Uh, very important question and uh, one of the interesting uh, topic, right, which uh, I am researching upon. So I would like to touch upon what would be a, a good dimension for uh, the patient-centric organizations or the industry uh, to look at, right? Um, because responsible AI, uh, we are talking about responsible AI and ethical AI as uh, key pillars, right? When we build a capability, a gen AI capability within the organization. So I think it is important for the organization to set up an enterprise governance team in terms of overseeing all the projects uh, uh, that is in the pipeline, uh, especially uh, leveraging uh, the Gen AI um, uh, potential capabilities, because we are in, in a very highly regulated industry. And uh, it is important for us uh, to kind of uh, factor in all uh, uh, the dimensions of uh, let it be on the performance side and also on the principal side. So one, it, one could be on the data quality itself and um, uh, in terms of reliability um, and, and also uh, in terms of principles i think uh, the transparency in handling uh, the data is critical and also uh, there is a, another dimension or a critical uh, talk of the topic is around how do we handle the bias in the algorithms and uh, how, how do we manage it uh, so uh, that's where uh, a lot of discussions uh, are happening and uh, as you might know india was leading one of uh, the g5 summit last year and uh, this responsible ai is was one of the key uh, critical work stream right which was discussed among the ai experts uh, so so I think it is very important for us to kind of uh, uh, factor in all those uh, data privacy uh, assessments and, and how do you how do you handle the data end to end, right? That is going to be uh, on the critical path. Um, and uh, uh, I think uh, long way to go, but uh, I think it is not just for the leaders, uh, but all the employees uh, involved uh, in Gen AI uh, need to be uh, um, cautious of uh, uh, adopting to responsible and ethical AI. And uh, uh, I can give a recent example right um uh, uh, in terms of um uh uh, like uh, adopting to some of the openly available LLM models, right? Uh, there were few developers uh, who wanted to leverage uh, the uh, pre-built LLM models, uh, which was available uh, publicly. But do you think we can directly go away and uh, implement that uh, within within the controlled uh, environment? The quick answer is no, because it has to go through a series of assessment by the enterprise governance team, whether it is uh, having any kind of security vulnerabilities and uh, whether we can leverage uh, any of the third-party solutions, right, uh, per se. 
coding. So I think uh, that might be frustrating for the developers who are doing the coding part of it, but it is important for the leaders and uh, uh, the employee itself to understand that uh, it is important. We are handling the patient data. At the end of the day, patient data is critical. So uh, we need to make sure that uh, whatever platform we leverage, it, it happened in a controlled environment and uh, data is secure. So I think that is a key message I would give to all the audience here. Thank you. Over to you, Kathy. Yeah, if I can quickly add on to that uh, great perspective, Dr. Santosh, uh, both in the educational sector. So today I'm also an off-campus professor at uh, Bits Pilani and IIT uh, Madras. So uh, we teach students, for example, especially uh, in Bits, uh, you know, on using Gen AI to generate some of the uh, research findings, literature review of reports. But I think one of the biggest dangers is the hallucination effect of Gen AI. And, uh, you know, we use Turnitin, we use a lot of anti uh, plagiarism tools. But Gen AI keeps getting smarter. Students tend to use tools such as Squillbot. So, how do you distinguish between human creativity, innovation, and, you know, what is machine generated? It's a very interesting thing. Recently, when I was also training DNB students, you know, cardiovascular thoracic students, in the use of Gen AI for simulation and modeling the human heart, when we give certain prompts to Gen AI to explain, uh, you know, mycardial valve conditions or, you know, angioplasty or certain other, uh, you know, important uh, technical terms when it came to surgery. What we realized is that it was not delivering the right results. The illustrations which were created, the modeling which was done, the simulation was all subpar. So this takes me to, you know, UNESCO's 2021 uh, declaration or recommendation when it came around implementing ethics and human values in artificial intelligence. Around 30 years back, uh, you know, actually uh, Stanford Research Institute had ventured on this experiment to map out what are the human attributes or human values. You know, it's not restricted only to accountability, transparency, transparency, fairness, uh, bias, etc. But fundamental human values such as uh, kindness, compassion, uh, humanness, uh, 36 such attributes. How does it affect innovation? Now, these are the kind of management frameworks which we need to apply to Gen AI to kind of build a regulatory framework. Uh, earlier in this year, in February, for the state of Karnataka, I was part of the launch of uh, Karnataka was one of the forward looking states which tried to bring about a regulatory bill for uh, ethical use of artificial intelligence, including generative AI. So we need more such, uh, you know, I would say private public partnerships, university corporate partnerships, which need to get down to the, you know, nuts and bolts of what does it take when you're talking about implementing, uh, implementing Gen AI at scale. Lastly, I want to talk about one experiment by MIT in the US, which is on the moral mission, where they're actually giving various simulations uh, to users and getting that feedback. What should a driverless car do when it goes out of control? Whom should it kill on the road? Eventually, somebody who's walking on the road has to die. So should it hit an animal, a young person, an old person? So this experiment is also giving uh, a kind of an insight into geographical bias. So for example, in countries like Japan, China, where age expectancy is higher, the feedback from the user to the artificial intelligence program of MIT is to save the life of you know older people. Come to countries like India, Southeast Asia, we don't mind letting go lives of uh, you know animals or older people when it comes to i mean no offense meant here but what i'm trying to say there are so many different biases which are human or inherent which need to kind of be retrofitted and fine tuned when it comes to application in in, in reducing uh, bias you know human bias in uh, in generative ai and these are long term initiatives i think a lot of research will continue in this field as as time progresses thank you okay um, I think with that, we uh, come towards the concluding part of today's uh, meeting. I mean, it's been an exciting uh, time for all of us listening to this. For me personally, I have learned a lot of things from a wonderful set of leaders who are sort of pioneers in their own industries and in their own areas. Right? Uh, with that, I think I would like to thank all our speakers who've been uh, wonderful, who've shared such great insights. I would like to thank my co-anchor, Bhavan, uh, as well. Uh, Bhavan, would you like to uh, share your concluding remarks on this, please? Uh, thanks, Ru, and uh, thank you all the leaders on the call. I think this was an amazing session. And uh, yes, there are some challenges with Gen AI, but it opens a lot of new frontier for all of us. And for the companies as well as for the students to learn. So looking forward to see how 
Gen AI will change the industry specifically for healthcare. We'll have to see. Thank you all.